Oh, yip yip, I knew about laps and I had tried it like a year ago, but then I let it to rest in peace. By accident I saw it again only a few days back, worked a bit with it, and I'm now here to say to you, it's cuting awesome. It even has a plugin manager, a modern plugin manager actually, with a store and all. Nothing like Flintstones Builder, I'm telling you. First up, do you want me to give you a quick overview on LAPS? It's not really a question, so let's do it. Okay, so LAPS uses Floam Toolkit, which is a super new Rust library with exceptional reactivity, and you'll see that later. And it implements the Flexbox and CSS grid layout algorithms via Taffy Crate, which basically powers Dioxys GUI, and also we use it on Bevy Game Engine if we want to build some UIs for our games. For font rendering, Floam uses Cosmic Text from the Cosmic Desktop, and that project has been turned into like the standard Rust library for text handling, with everyone literary using it, including Bevy2. For the actual toolkit rendering, Floam uses WGPU, which runs natively in all three platforms, Direct 3D for Windows, Metal on macOS, and Vulkan for Linux. Believe it or not, GTK can't do that after 20 years in development. Can't even do Vulkan really. Oh, and of course we have Winit for Windows management, so everything will be okay with Wayland compositors. You see, we might have 20 under active development toolkits right now, but Rust ecosystem has an amazing modularity, with these projects sharing a large number of components and definitely sharing design ideas, with every new project been pretty much smarter and better. And you know what? The Rust community doesn't hate Flutter. They are laughing at it. <laughs> okay, back in track. And the last important component is the editor itself. I don't follow exactly how that works, but I believe they built on top of the She Editor, that project that started as a Google Insiders, but then it was discontinued. Anywho, to the demo maybe? First of everything, Laps is on a pre-alpha version. Basically, there is not even a version. It just says nightly. There are four main views that we can control from those small buttons on the bottom, and for what it's worth, we can resize this bar, and in general the UI is super customizable. So, we have the left panel with the files tree, the bottom panel with the terminal most usually, and the right panel that at the moment is empty. In the center we have our code view, and the design is very similar to Builder and VS Code, and similar to Builder is also the drag and drop, even if not as beautiful. Let me put that back with SFX. Of course, we can also split our editor. And one thing you can't see on video is that this process feels very lightweight and accurate. On header bar, we have a lapse icon that is basically fake doing nothing. Then we have a branch selector, but the most interesting thing here is the remote development. Haven't tried it to be honest, but it's supposed to connect with the SSH to a remote machine that it runs a lapse proxy. After connecting, all the plugins and commands will be run from the remote machine, and according to documentation, you would have exactly the same experience as if you were working a local workspace without feeling any differences. That's super crazy actually, because for example, we can develop a web game with Bevy from our laptop when on train and obviously the performance will be like 10,000 times faster than VS Code remotes, and much simpler to set up too. Meanwhile, that bar can do much more than remote connections. Clicking on the arrow, we can open a folder or a workspace. Clicking on the left, we open the search file. Now, if we put a colon, we activate the command palette that we can also do with Control plus Shift plus P. And with backslash, we open a drop down with search on the current file that we can use as a quick jump point. On the right side, we have the main menu that gives us access to settings, shortcuts, and the about dialog. And for some reason, we get all the window controls, even if the GNOME window manager uses the close only. But optionally, we can use the native title bars if we want. Now, on the left sidebar, we have a handy input for quickly committing our changes. On the file tree now, we can create new files or new folders, and that's basically a native GTK menu, but anyway, the issue is that drag and drop doesn't work yet. 
So if we want to move a file to another location, we should do reveal in file manager and operate there. On the bright side, laps will immediately update. Okay, laps plugs, please. We can search for new plugins within the editor, which is super awesome. And what if we install the material icons, for instance? Boom, virtually less than two seconds. We can uninstall, disable, or reload, but let's apply them for start, and since this is a theme we need to actually change it from the settings. Core settings and icon theme, and remember when I told you about the reactivity of the toolkit in the beginning of the video? So icons will get applied immediately, and the same will happen when we change the font, and pretty much every single option it updates instantly. Set this to something really big. And, um, okay the middle sidebar kinda failed and it didn't resize to fit the text, but it's not very likely to use such font size anyway. What's most likely to use is more plugins, and the Lax plugins page is super nice, and there are plugins like Python language servers. On the bottom we have an embedded super fast Rust terminal, and then there is a search tab, and basically there is already a search and replace but it will be available on the next Flatpak release. And I just checked on Flathub Manifest, so this is version 0.2.8, which is the latest tag release, but not the nightly, and it's like 5 months old. Poof, stupid Flathub. Anyway, I'm gonna finish it, cause I spent so much time already. New video soon then, but for now we have two more panels, one for the errors and a separated for the warnings, which is a very clever idea. On settings we have a VM mode, but it's not very completed. Cause who knows all the VM shortcuts anyway? Speaking of which, we can also set our very own. Finally is the editor that obviously has a Rust analyzer support and auto completions, but it misses a copilot plugin which can be a non-go for many developers these days. It is a worth to mention that all these popovers don't lag at all, which means they aren't getting annoying. That aside, we have multiple cursors that work pretty fine, but not much other than those, which might actually be an advantage considering how bloated the VS Code has become. Oh, and we have this code folding that creates a thumbnail instead and looks like broken graphics. So, that was everything for now, and many apologies I missed to demo the latest laps. However, it's not very different really, and graphics are quite bugged on nightly, so even if I knew it from start, I don't think I would be able to do a video with it. Anyway, time for bevy.